Would you believe that the first baby carriage was pulled by a dog? Yes, the very first baby carriage was more like a miniature chariot for the elite. From its invention to its sleek, modern versions today, the baby carriage has undergone a remarkable transformation. But who would have thought its journey would include royal controversies, ingenious collapsible designs, and even prams that look like race cars? Today, we'll take you on a fascinating ride through the history of the baby carriage and reveal just how it became the iconic piece of baby gear we know and love. So, buckle up. It all began in 1733 with William Kent, an English architect. Now, Kent wasn't known for baby gear. He was a respected architect and landscape designer who crafted grand buildings and lavish gardens. But one day, he received an unusual commission from the third Duke of Devonshire, who wanted something special for his young son. Kent's response, the world's first baby carriage. Not quite the lightweight strollers we use today, this carriage was an elegant shell-shaped contraption designed to be pulled by a dog, or, for a grander entrance, a Shetland pony. Imagine the child being carted around like royalty, literally drawn by their loyal hound or pony. It was a luxury that only the aristocracy could afford, and, initially, the world's first baby carriage was seen more as a toy for the elite than an item of practical baby care. Here's a curious fact. Despite its popularity among the British aristocracy, this design wouldn't really take off for non-royal families for over a hundred years. Fast forward to 1848. Enter Charles Burton, an inventor who, unlike Kent, had practicality in mind. Burton had a groundbreaking idea. What if parents could push the baby carriage themselves instead of relying on animals? He crafted a human-powered baby carriage hoping it would revolutionize infant transport in America. But the response was less than enthusiastic. In fact, pedestrians were outraged. Picture this, the sidewalks of busy American cities, already bustling, and suddenly these early carriages, driven by well-meaning but inexperienced operators, barreling through the crowds. People were not impressed. Some even saw it as a menace to public safety. Tired of the public outcry, Burton made a bold move and took his talents overseas, setting up shop in London. There, he found eager buyers among royalty, designing prams for Queen Victoria, Queen Isabel of Spain, and even the Pasha of Egypt. Did you know, Burton's baby carriage models actually paved the way for something we all use today. And it wasn't just for royal babies. Can you guess what it was? Then came a Parisian inventor named E. Bauman. Picture this, it's 1906, and families are living in smaller homes in the heart of Paris. Storage space is tight, and these large, rigid carriages take up way too much room. Bauman saw a golden opportunity to solve a major problem. His invention, the first ever collapsible baby carriage, aptly named The Dream. For parents, it was like a miracle. They could finally fold up their baby carriage and tuck it away. The dream was more than just a compact design. It represented a shift towards practicality and ease for the everyday family, a trend that would only grow stronger in the 20th century. But collapsibility was only the beginning. The next big innovation would bring us one step closer to the carriages we see today, with a style that was as functional as it was fashionable. After World War I, in a small town in Germany called Landau, came the next leap in baby carriage design. The first pram, as we'd recognize it today, rolled onto the scene. This four-wheeled carriage had two seats facing each other, parallel to the axles, and for the first time, it featured a hood to protect against rain and sun. In summer, parents could swap the hood for a sunshade to keep their babies cool. Suddenly, baby carriages weren't just functional. They were adaptable. And the pram wasn't only practical, it introduced the concept of accessory options. Parents could buy mosquito nets, adjustable umbrella stands, and even a spare wheel for their carriage. Baby carriages were evolving from simple child transport into customizable products, just like other consumer goods. And now, we arrive at today's baby carriages, or strollers, as we call them. 
Over the decades, innovations have made them lighter, more durable, and suitable for our on-the-go lifestyles. In the 1980s, the world saw a boom in jogging strollers, three-wheeled models designed for active parents. Picture this, a sleek aerodynamic stroller, almost like a needle-nosed race car, gliding along as parents jog through city parks. These aren't just carriages, they're designed for a generation of active, multitasking parents who want to exercise without leaving their kids behind. Today, there's a stroller for every need and lifestyle. There are models designed for off-road adventures, strollers that can be attached to bikes, and even ones that fold down to fit inside a backpack. But with all these high-tech upgrades, have we lost something essential from those classic designs, or have we merely brought royal luxury to everyday parenting? Let us know what you think in the comments. The journey of the baby carriage mirrors the journey of parenting itself, from the elite luxury of 18th century England to the practical, multitasking necessity of today. Each design, each innovation tells a story of how our needs and our lifestyles have evolved. So, what does the future hold for baby carriages? Will they become even more high-tech, or maybe go back to some classic designs? What do you think? Do you have memories of your first stroller or a favorite one you've used with your own kids? Share your stories below, and if you enjoyed this journey through history, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update on the fascinating history behind everyday items. Until next time.